Hello everyone and welcome back to Technically Unsure, where I'm not really sure what I'm doing technically. But what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? So today in this video, we are going to take a look at a mini computer. This one is N150 CPU. So we took a look at bunch in the price range of 170, 200, 220 ish. They were all N100. And this one is N150, which comes with four core, four threads, 25 watt TDP and turbo clock can go up to 3.6 gigahertz. It supports DDR4-3200 up to 16 gigabyte RAM and also there are dual M.2 PCIe Gen 3 SSD slots. So you can basically put 4 and 4 like 8 terabyte PCIe SSD in this mini computer. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is the device. It's EQ14. It's the navy blue color color. The version that I got is 16 gigabyte RAM, 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD, which I'm going to replace. This one is 2089. Let's call it 200 bucks. This is N150 and comes with Wi-Fi 6 and a gigabit Ethernet. So let me grab my knife. I don't know if they are shipping it with any operating system, but even if they are, I will most likely try some my own NVMe SSD and install my own operating system, but we'll see. I just want to show you guys what you will get if you buy this device. So it's one of those sliding ones. Okay, so let's slide this out and comes out like that. So this is the EQ. 14. Let me take this out. Okay, there you go. Let's see what else is in the box before going through this. User manual. Let's see what it does have in it. Okay, how to install RAM and NVMe SSD and other stuff, which we are not going to need. It is the power cord. This is a first mini PC that I see like that. It's just uh, straight up, you just connect the AC cable to the mini computer. And I'm assuming all the power circuitry and all the stuff is inside. As opposed to usually you get an adapter, it outputs uh, the voltage and the wattage that mini PC needs, but this is just a straight up, just a regular cable. The power circuitry is in the computer. And they ship an HDMI cable, nice of them, but I'm not gonna need it. Let me take these away. So in terms of I, Oh, this is the power button, LED indicator of is it turned on or not. USB-C is over here, headphone jack and USB 3 port over here. In the back, you have two HDMI full size slots, two gigabit ethernet ports and three more USB 3 ports in the back. And it's very lightweight, by the way. Let me see, what is this? Okay, so it's probably after removing the screws just for pulling the back, all right. Let me grab my tweezers. Okay, so I think we need these uh, sharp ones to do it like that. Yeah, okay. So this is a Phillips screw, regular, but you have to do this and remove the rubber. This is not feet, this is inside. It's just a screw cover, I'm gonna call it. It's not a rubber feet. All right, so let's take it out. Okay, so screws come out all the way. It's not one of those, you know, stays in the case. All right, and then you hold this and lift it up. Okay, so there you have it. This is where the RAMs are installed. And this is the heat sink for the both of NVMe SSDs that you can install. So one is already installed underneath, as you can see. You can remove this and install another one, which I am going to do. So we have to remove this. All right, there you go. So they already, as I said, 512 is already there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my favorite SSD that I got introduced to recently from HP, SSD FX900 Pro 4 terabyte. And you will get 7200 to 6800 read and write speeds consecutively. So I am going to use this and uh, install this on this computer. Okay, so this is what was inside. So we are going to take Take out this NVMe SSD. It also comes with a sticky pad in the back, but in this case, we need to probably remove it. Yeah, it's going to be tight fit. So I'm gonna remove this one. All right, I removed it. So now we can install this. Okay, first I have to remove the screw. Install that. All right, and now we can put the heat sink on top of it. 
all right so that is installed finally we can put back the cover all right there you go i'm not going to put back the screws because i am going to replace the ssd so i'm going to keep this over here okay so that's all give me a couple of minutes let me bring out the cables and mouse and keyboard and i will be right back all right everything is ready i am going to power it on one two three okay i hear the fan noises let me keep pressing delete just in case okay there you go we have the n150 and four core four threads 16 gigabyte ram 3200 megahertz speed and here's the bios options you guys love it when i walk it through the bios settings so i'm just going to do it cpu settings is here if you want virtualization is enabled by default avx is enabled prefetcher all that stuff is enabled you can go to power performance it's already on turbo you can play around this and change the settings and the c states and s states and all that is here okay you can play around it gt settings is here okay Okay, so this is the Intel ME stuff. Once we boot into Ubuntu, we also will try to maybe get over this. Uh, thermal settings, CPU thermal settings, platform thermal set. Oh, what? Oh, trip point. All right, so trusted computing is there. So Windows 11 will definitely work. And I think it is shipped with Windows 11. ACPI settings, hardware monitor. Okay, that's more like it. So 29 Celsius, okay? It's cool, but we're not doing anything. But I'm saying it's just in the idle. That's what expected. SRIOV is here you might need this for if you install proxmox and want to pass through devices okay to your guest os's and network stacks csm configuration and vme okay it detected my hp ssd fx 900 pro 4 terabyte chipset settings is over here memory config graphics config pci express settings is here you can change stuff in here or two or three and pchio pci express so you can change settings here for pci as well sata settings usb security hd config and all that stuff security boot and save and exit so yeah my nvm ssd already have windows on it this one comes with a windows so first let's take a look just a very quickly just want to confirm that they are shipping it windows 11 so we are booting into whatever they are shipping it so if you buy this this is what you will get i'm assuming it's going to get into windows 11 initial setup and that's pretty much it i just wanted to confirm that okay there you have it so so it boots into windows 11 and uh, you can walk through the setup and set everything up by default is in english okay so now what i'm going to do is let's boot into ubuntu and uh, i inserted a usb stick for ubuntu i am going to go back to bios and boot from this let's try ubuntu first you guys like linux i want to see if you can install linux and carry this around with docker images you know and have plex and multimedia stuff and all that so just want to confirm Ubuntu and do some benchmarks. So let's get into fast forward mode till I get everything ready. Okay, as you can see, we are booted into Ubuntu. Once we run the NeoFetch, you will see the host is EQ, B-Link EQ14, Ubuntu 22. It is Intel N100, 4 core, 4 thread, 3.6 gigahertz, and there is the Intel graphics, built-in UHD graphics, okay? So if we do a stress NG test, you will see the power consumption is going up to 23 watts so that's i think when you're using every single thread and core in this machine that's what you will get 23 watts so here is the p sensor so it's 43 and 24 25 watts so far the max pin 46 going up a little bit more i still don't hear any fan noise by the way it's super quiet so yeah there are some cores that are hot so here is some more information but yeah we're using 100% of the CPU. Okay, there you have it. So yeah, it doesn't really get hot. It's okay. So let's see the score. Okay, 20,000. I believe Raspberry Pi 5 is 872 900. And if we try to also check the Ethernet, let's do an iperf3 test. Yes, there you go. So you have the gigabit Ethernet. By the way, I didn't install any drivers. So as is, it is working in Ubuntu a live image. Okay. If we try to do a very quick test on my NVMe SSD. So let's see which is which. So NVMe SSD 1 is mine. And SDA 1 is the one that ships with the device. So I'm going to test the NVMe SSD. That's the one I installed. So HD Parm. Let's see the speeds. 
Okay, it's a little bit slow. Obviously, as you know, that's not the SSD issue. It's the mini PC issue. I don't think it's using the full line, but also it's split. So there is another NVMe SSD right there. So they are probably sharing bandwidth of some sort. I don't know. It's a little bit slow. What I see usually in powerful computers with PCI Gen 4, I see like 9,000 on the disk reads, five, 6,000 on the second one. So it's a little bit slow. Anyway, so one thing I want to see if we can read the BIOS. Let's see if uh, in B-Link it's allowed. Nope, it does not find the chip. So if you want to dump the BIOS, you will have to use that SOIC clip. It's also locked down. Not like those Chinese motherboards that I've reviewed in this channel. In this case, you will have to use the physically open it up, find the chip and dump it. I'm going to show you guys. Hopefully I will find it on this one. So if you want to do BIOS tweaking, you have to do that. I have multiple videos on how to dump UEFI chips. I have video on how to dump BIOS and reverse engineer BIOS content. Lots of other videos I dumped the BIOS and, and show you guys how to do the analysis. But this one is not easy, it's not with flash drop. So Ubuntu works, we did some benchmarks, we did some tests. It's time to go back to Windows 11 and see some more Windows based performance. So give me a couple of minutes, I will be right back. Okay, so we are back and uh, let me show you a couple of things that I did in Windows. As you can see, this is Cinebench 2024 score. There is also a score for the disk benchmark. Mark. And as you know, it's limitation of this computer, unfortunately. The SSD, I've seen 5,000, 6,000 on the other videos. So this is definitely the limitation of it. So just so you're aware, this is a still acceptable speeds. Just don't accept crazy Gen 4 speeds from this NVMe SSD. And here is the 3 d Mark score for the CPU. That's exactly what is expected of this particular N150 CPU. And in terms of uh, things that you can do in Windows, I just also loaded the Cyber truck so you can absolutely game on this a little bit nothing triple a you know but yeah you can play games like this and you are getting like 40 fps 30 something fps on this euro truck okay so i just wanted to show you a bunch of things in here in windows i got everything to work no complication ethernet drivers and everything will have worked out of box didn't install anything manually in windows and in linux everything worked hdmi as you can see the resolution is uh, 4k video playback absolutely Absolutely no trouble, I'm not gonna even test. You can install Linux Plex and Docker images on this. Put all your NVMe SSD with your multimedia. Take it in your trips and just absolutely you can plug it to your TV and do your work or use it as a multimedia machine portable. You can use it as a daily driver. Absolutely. It doesn't have any issues. I can definitely use it as a daily driver like going with web surfing, sending emails, business applications, Word, Office, Excel, all that stuff. Absolutely. And even some light gaming or playing multimedia videos, 4K, whatever. This can be used for all that and killing it and as you can see in the power consumption when you're idle in the operating system nothing is really running so let me close all these stuff so you see sometimes it jumps to 20 watts and stuff but when you're idle and not doing really anything it's 12 watts when you start using it and go around your operating system bit 17 18 watts goes to 20 comes back that's pretty much it very low power consumption if we go to let's say youtube play a 4k videos okay so we are here and as you can see this is a 4k video on full resolution let's say you are watching a 4k video and uh, you plug this into tv this is 4k resolution my screen is also 4k as you can see it will idle around 15 16 17 watts okay goes up to 20 comes back so yeah 15 16 when you're playing a video on full screen in 4k resolution with hdr and everything 60 frames per second 4k video you will get this and i know you guys will want to see this it's not dropping any frames as expected it's very very powerful very capable machine so i just wanted to show you this and uh, we did video playback benchmarking ethernet cpu everything that i can i showed you there is no issues with it so hope you guys enjoyed this video i also showed you the inside as well a little bit so yeah please let me know what you think down below thanks for watching i will see you in the next video. Bye for now.